Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I have made a few videos recently talking about bags that I have sold or bags that I've been thinking about selling or generally about not keeping bags in my collection anymore that I don't really, really love or use. And on those videos, I got quite a few comments in the comment box asking me to talk more about where I sell my bags, how I sell my bags, any advice I have about selling bags and generally about selling bags in the current luxury resale market, which let's be honest, seems to have slowed down so far. It's almost on life support. The luxury resale market for handbags is practically dead. So selling bags at the minute is definitely not as easy or as quick or as successful as it was selling luxury handbags maybe one to two years ago whenever the market really did seem to have a peak. There were waiting lists with consignment stores for certain bags. There were a lot of very hyped bags out that people were trying to get. They couldn't get them in store. They were trying to buy them on resale market and the prices for some of those bags were absolutely ridiculous. Bags were selling at stupid money. They were selling at six times the price it would have cost in retail. And I'm not just talking about the Hermes and the Birkin and the Mini Kelly. They're always going to sell away above retail because they're so hard to get and the process you have to go through in most cases to get one. But there were even limited edition Chanel bags, Louis Vuitton bags, different types of bags that wouldn't normally attract that very, very high price were selling for at ridiculous prices, I'm going to call it what it is. They were ridiculous and they were extremely high, but they were market driven. And it wasn't that somebody decided one day, I'm going to sell my bag for this amount of money, even though nobody's going to pay that and it's completely against the market trend, but that's what I'm going to try and do anyway. That was where the market was. The market trends were selling certain bags way, way, way above retail. And they were selling like that quicker than they could get listed onto the consigner's page, they were already sold. They were flying out like hotcakes. And there generally seems to have been over the recent number of months, and I've made a few videos talking about how the luxury resale market has slowed away down and it's dead and different things that are impacting that because I find it very, very interesting to watch that trend. But generally, I would say at the minute, it's at a real dip. It's very low, it's very slow, prices are starting to come down. Now, ultimately, if you're somebody that buys bags on the resale market, that is going to be a good thing because no longer are you going to have to compete with the hype and compete with lots and lots of people trying to buy those bags, which is pushing the price way up. It's simple economics. Now you're going to have time and prices are going to come down and the resale market for some instances should get fun again. It should be searching those pieces and getting them at a really good discount because the market is back down at a dip and you're not going to be, generally, there's always going to be exceptions. There are always going to be some bags that are above retail, well above retail. There are always going to be some bags that there's a huge amount of interest in. But generally, it should give people the opportunity again to buy bags at a better price. But what does that mean for you if you're one of the people that was in the comment box asking for tips or advice on how you sell your bags? Because that can't be seen in a vacuum. And if you're going to now try and sell bags, you're going to be impacted by that. You're going to be impacted by how long it's going to take to sell your bag. You're going to be impacted by the price you're going to get for your bag. And you're going to be impacted on whether or not you can even sell your bag. Bags are sitting whenever before that was kind of unheard of. The questions I was asked for me selling my bags is slightly different because I have this YouTube channel and I have sold quite a few bags through vlog sales, either with me coming on and showing you the bags and selling the bags directly. Or I have also had vlog sales that have been facilitated by Rod at the Lux Theory. I've sent the bags to him. I've done the vlog sales so as you guys could all see them. And then you've contacted Rod to sort out the purchase and he has dealt with all the back end side of it. And that is one of the ways that I have sold my bags. I've also though sold bags through consignment without selling them on or showing them on my YouTube channel as a vlog sale. I've used Chapella in Dublin, which I'm sure I'm not saying right, but Ella in the store, which is very close to Brown Thomas, is absolutely lovely. And they do lives on a Wednesday night and they sell them. They have an actual store, which is very, very pretty to go into. They have really good stock and I have sold bags there. I've also sold bags through a couple of consigners in England. I have sold them through Designer Exchange. I have sold, I haven't sold, but I know that one of my friends has sold through, through Bagista. And those are options where you can send your 
pictures and all of your information about your bags and they will decide whether or not they're going to offer you a buyout. So they're going to offer to buy your bag up front and basically give you money for that or if they're going to offer you consignment terms and they will take your bag from you, sell it on consignment and then take a cut of the fee at the end and they will give you the amount that they have agreed with you in advance. The thing about those are, those are businesses. So if you are selling through a consigner, business to consigner that has a brick storefront, the cut that they take has to be bigger than if you're selling it either yourself or through an online consigner because they have to pay for their store and their staff and their insurances and their VAT and all of the things that come along with that. If you don't want the hassle of selling it by yourself, that is an option and it will either give you your money up front, but if it's a buyout, the cut that the company takes is going to be higher than if you take the consignment terms. If you take the consignment terms, you're still gonna pay their cut, but you're obviously gonna wait until your bag is sold, and then you'll get your money back then, and that could bring a bit of delay because that ties back into what we've been talking about and about how the market has slowed down. And I know of certain bags that have been sent on those terms that people thought were going to sell very, very quickly, myself included thought that, and they didn't because the market has slowed down that much and there's just not the same demand anymore. So that's something to weigh up, whether or not you're willing to take less for your bag to get your money quicker, or whether or not you're willing to wait for consignment but still use one of those stores. Another option is to use an online consigner like Rod from The Lux Theory, like Connor from Conrad's Closet. Connor obviously has a YouTube channel as well, The Closet by Connor, but he also has his consignment store, which is Conrad's Clo Closet. He's also in Australia and he also will facilitate that for you. There's also Global Lux Closet in the UK. There's a lot of consigners in the US and you can make arrangements with them online to either send your bag to them up front or that you send all of the photographs. They then advertise your bag for you and then whenever it gets sold, you send the bag to them at that stage. It's important the bag goes to the consigner at one stage because it protects you both. One, they check it. They check the bag is exactly as described. They check it's authentic and then send it on. Also, you, the seller, are going to be safer because they deal with it as a business. Personally, if I was using a consigner that was going to facilitate, facilitate the sale, but I still sent the bag directly to the person that was purchasing it, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. And for me, the beauty of using a consigner is it goes through them and they're a third party person to protect both sides. And that's just one thing I would bear in mind depending how each consigner works. Now there's obviously going to be a lot more consigners. There's only so many that I can have tried. There's only so many that I can have used. Whoever you're going to think about using though, make sure you do your research, make sure you do your due diligence, talk to people that have used them, bought from them, sold from them, to make sure everything's above board and there's nothing you're going to find out the hard way whenever it's too late. But that is an option where the fee will be less for the consigner, you will get more back, but you're relying on their audience, so it might take a little bit longer to sell if they don't have an actual store for people to come into, depending how big their reach is, will impact on how long it will take for your bag to sell. If you're in the US, you will have a lot more options. For example, Fashion File. I think Fashion File is a great store. I know there's a lot of people will have comments about the prices that they sell at, but not having a store like that, as big as that, where I am, I sometimes, quite often, will search on Fashion File with drool coming very unattractively down my mouth because they have such a good catalogue of bags available and there's so many that would be hard to find but they will have them and that in the US is also a good option. They buy bags obviously to sell. I don't think they offer the greatest amount although it might be something you can live with but obviously it's because they do have a business to run and they're taking their cut out of it and then they will sell the bag on. You generally will already be have been paid up front and get your money out of the bag and that's also another way to think about doing it. Another option is Facebook groups. Personally, I am not in any of the Facebook groups, but I do know a lot of people that spy and sell through Facebook groups and have done so very, very successfully. They will take, again, lesser fees, and a lot of the groups are closed groups, so you will be able to advertise on that group and ask somebody for a recommendation about a certain seller, ask what other people's experiences have been, and that can be sometimes a very good way to buy and sell bags at 
decent prices. If you're selling in one of those groups though, my advice would be to price your bag reasonably. I think unless it's a very sought after bag, it won't be very well received if you're trying to price it away above the market value or at the very peak of it. I think if you're using those sorts of groups, the prices from the groups that I've looked at generally always seem to be quite reasonable and that's probably why the success of selling within those groups is quite good because people are sensible with their pricing. Another way to sell your bags is to sell them individually and that's through either the likes of eBay or Vestiaire Collective. Now I had a terrible experience on eBay, we've talked about that enough, we're not going to do that again, that was not nice. <laughs> So if you're selling on eBay or Vestiaire, just be aware that there is the potential for scamming on both sides. You sell it, somebody can say they didn't get the authentic bag, somebody can try and scam you that way, or buying can work out to be a disaster. So that's just something to be aware of if you're selling through any of those platforms. Vestiaire Collective, I think, offers a little bit more protection, but if you look on YouTube, there's lots of videos about stories that didn't go too well on that. Personally, I've never had a bad experience on Vestiaire, but there are stories out there that you would just need to do your own research and due diligence on to make sure that you're happy selling in that way. Again, each of those are gonna take a cut, they're gonna take a fee out of what it is you sell your bag for, and that's something just to be aware of when you're working out your price and what you're happy to receive for your bag. Those are some very general ways and ideas on how to sell your bag, but I think at the moment, because of where the market is, you also need to have a really good conversation about whether or not you want to sell now, whether or not it's a bag that you know for sure that you're definitely happy to let go. You need to do your market research to find out what price you're likely to get. You also need to be patient. If you're going to try and sell your bag quickly and it's not a bag that there's a buyer immediately waiting for, you will get people that will come back to you and try and offer very, very low prices for your bag. So set in your mind what the minimum is that you're willing to accept and be patient so as you're not taking a price that you're gonna regret later. I've lived that story. I have sold bags before with no patience because I'm not known for my patience. And once I've decided it was gone and I wanted it gone, I've sold bags before at stupid prices and then I've really regretted them and then I've came and whittled on in Uria about how I've regretted selling the Speedy for a stupid price and selling the Chanel Square Mini for a stupid price and selling something else for a stupid price and it's because I had no patience and that is really, really bad when it comes to selling bags. If it's a bag that you don't have an audience that's immediately waiting to look at your bags, I think you need patience or you will end up in the position that I did. When I sold bags, and I really wish I hadn't because I wasn't happy with the price that I sold them for, and it was my own foolishness. It was me, myself wanting them gone, having no patience and accepting something that I never should have. If you've decided though that the bag definitely you want it to go, it's not for you anymore, you've fallen out of love with it, have a look at all of those different options on how to sell your bag and figure out which one is best for you. Figure out which one you're going to be most comfortable with and which one that you can accept the price that's being offered. Make sure you get the price agreed in advance and if there's to be any changes to that price, if the consigner, for example, is talking about reducing that price and it would have an impact on what you receive, make sure you agree with them in advance that they will come back and speak to you about that first so you have input into that and you get to agree it before the bag is actually sold so you know exactly what it is that you're getting back. Do your research on who you're selling with reach out to other people that have bought with them, shopped with them, sold with them. I get messages quite regularly on Instagram from people asking me about people they know I've sold with or shopped with just to see what my experience is. And generally most people will not mind that and they'll be more than willing to give their experience because when you have a little luxury community like this and we all love and buy handbags, we don't want to see anybody getting scammed or ripped off because it's really not nice and it could happen to any of us. So we all kind of need to look out for each other to make sure as far as we can that that doesn't happen because that's an experience that nobody wants to go through because it's pretty horrible. So if certainly if it's anybody I've shopped with, bought with, would Whatever, feel free to come into my Instagram DMs and ask me a question about it and I will be more than happy to give you my honest opinion and I'm sure most of us would be. Certainly with Rod at the Lux Theory and Connor at the Closet, Deal has sold through Connor, so has Meredith. 
those are going to be people that you're going to get a good service with and there's going to be more but those are just the people that we generally would work with and have talked to a lot. I know connor has been really helpful with me before when I was buying that Birkin. He gave me so much good advice. So those are options there for you just to protect you a little bit. Yes, you pay a bit of a fee, but they provide a service. It's a business. They're giving you expertise and time and doing all of that work in the background, but you're getting a lot back for it. You're getting their the trust, you're getting the security and you're getting all of that experience as well. Also, if you're going to sell any of your bags, make sure you agree up front how you will be paid. If you're being paid through PayPal, PayPal can hold money for quite a long time. Their conversion rates aren't great. The fees that they charge can be high. If it's a bank transfer, again, depending on the currency, make sure you've worked out all of that in advance so you know what you're actually going to get back and how you're going to receive your money and what fees are going to be attached to that to make sure you're not in the end left in a position thinking that's not what I thought was going to happen and you'll be kicking yourself. And see these regrets, see these sellers remorse, these regrets that I have. It's not about selling the bags, it's about what I ultimately sold them for and it, it eats at me because it, it was silly. And you, you want to try and avoid that because it's not a nice feeling when you've let your bag go and you're not happy with what you've got for it in the end. So do do your research and know exactly what's going to be the position when you go in if you do decide to let any of your bags This go. was a very quick overview on selling bags in this current luxury resale market, which is very, very slow. There were some options for you, some things to consider and be aware of before you actually make that decision. If there are any specifics though that you want to know or things you'd like to ask, please just come into the comment box and ask me those questions and I will get back to them. Sometimes it can be slow for me to get to my comments because I have children and a business and dogs and all of that, but I will always eventually get to them. So if you have any questions, just come into the comment box and ask those and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Or if I don't know, there might be somebody that I know that will know the answer for you. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope it's been somewhat informative if you were asking any of those questions about selling. If you have enjoyed it in any way, please do consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing. And if you're not done with me yet, I'm going to leave another video for you on the screen to enjoy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching me. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.